You know, I totally and completely understand, after watching last Wednesday's Dynamite, why so many fans thought that MJF's work shoot promo was so freaking fantastic. Calling it the better than the pipe bomb of CM Punk back in 2011. Greatest promo they've ever heard. And I like those initial knee-jerk knee -jerk reflectionary uh, emotions that come out of fans, which is whatever. It's fine. But I totally get why they thought this promo was great. Because I thought it was great in a bubble. Because MJF is one of the best all-around performers in wrestling. He is. In terms of like the total package, he's at the top of the list. And he's easily one of the very best talkers in professional wrestling today. And when you look compared to the rest of the AEW roster, he sure as hell among the very, very best of both in AEW. And when you look at the young lions of AEW, like he's up there in the cat pantheon of the Stings and the CM Punks and the Brian Danielsons, like that's elite young lion company trying to overcome the grizzled vets and the glory hogs like the Wardlows and the Hangman Pages and the Bucks of Sucks and the Kenny Omegas of the world and so forth. But all, all joking aside, like, it was a great fucking promo because it did a few things. Wrestling fans love the behind the scenes crap. They always have. So wrestling fans want to feel like they know everything. And this is an example of where they can feel like they know more. They love the reality theme in promos. Always have, always will. And it gives a chance for AEW fans in particular to feel like the whole fan fest no show for double or nothing was a work. And they feel validated now if they believed it was a work, which is erroneous thinking, but talk about that in a moment but for the moment they feel validated like this is a work i knew it all along so this promo ties into that be like oh my god i knew it brilliant and you know there's certainly a number of wrestling fans that love crapping on AEW and love crapping on tony khan both for valid and invalid reasons alike and let's be clear here wrestling fans love the liberal use of profanity in the promo talking about shit and fucking and everything else I go, oh, yeah, wrestling fans are geeked out for that because even in AEW where you hear shit dropped on almost a weekly basis on TBS and TNT, you, know, you don't hear some of this other stuff said on other programs or even on AEW. So the level and depth and the passion and range that MJF saw, showed in this pro promo like took it to a whole different level. There is no question about it. And I'm absolutely aligned. Like In a bubble judged on its own merit strictly as a promo. It was a fantastic piece of microphone work by MJF. Like, this dude is that dude, especially for AEW. And whatever Tony Khan's got to do, and that company's got to do, they got to figure out a way to make sure that MJF is the face of the place for a long, long time to come. However, when I look at the bigger picture for that promo, I don't think it was that great. I really don't. Like in an isolated pocket, it's a fantastic promo. But it's kind of like, a, however, what's the fucking point here? Because one, MJF's already a top guy. He can get over without doing this type of shit. We've seen him get over in the right way, in the way that's needed, especially the ability to get heat. He doesn't need to do this kind of frankly lazy shit for his character. There are other dudes, like if you had a jungle boy down on his luck in, in terms of the character and presentation, then he came out and shot out a promo like this. That absolutely elevates his profile. That takes him to a different place. And MJF, like, it's a little more par for the course of what you would actually expect. Let's keep it real here. It feels kind of lazy to me. And frankly, it feels kind of lazy as well in terms of Tony Khan and AEW. Like, this is what you come up with? This is the best kind of idea you've got now for MJF? Uh. And with where he went with that promo, whether it was intended or not, you took your top heel and totally cemented him in babyface territory. And maybe that was your plan all along. And maybe that's what you want to do. But in a company that lacks for really credible top heels and guys that can legit get the type of heat and sustain the type of heat that an MJF can, 
for a guy in his position and in his role that can get the best out of others, great as a young lion as he is. Is this really the best time to be turning him babyface? Is that really best for his character? Is that best for your other talents? Is that best for your show and your presentation? I don't know that it is. And I guess another problem of mine is why go to such lengths to work the fans in the locker room like this? It just kind of feels unnecessary. Okay, the shit's out there about MJF and he's got a year and a half on his contract with AEW and we're going to make a storyline out of it. Like, honestly, fans of wrestling can be fans of other sports and they get tired of hearing about contract shit all the time with athletes and other sports and teams and other sports. So do they always want to hear about that when it comes to wrestling? Ugh. It just kind of feels unnecessary. Like, you're working the boys and girls. Do you really need to? You're trying to work the fans here. Do you really need to? And I think what it really comes down to for me, honestly, is the most important question of here, all here. Is what exactly is the payoff? Like, if you have a great big payoff in mind, like, you can justify doing a lot of things in wrestling. But in this particular case, when I look at this promo for this performer at this moment in time, I say, what's the payoff? Is it going to lead to an on-screen physical rivalry with Tony Khan? Good Lord, probably not. I mean, Tony Khan might yak out some extra booger sugar. He might be able to give MJF a go. Who the fuck knows? I feel the pain! I feel the pain! But is it going to lead to an on-screen feud between the two of these where there's going to actually be some full-blooded fisticuffs at some point? Probably not. So there's no real payoff there. Is this going to lead to a feud with MJF taking on somebody that's connected to TK in some way? Well, even if it did, did you need something like this to lead to that? Like, for example, they showed, you know, you saw people post on social media, after Dynamite, after MJF's promo, like CM Punk came out and he was clearly hobbled, but he was coming out after MJF did the promo, like, okay, let's even assume the young lion CM Punk is just taking some time. You can't lose a title you never defend. Smart, Mr. Punk, very smart. That's the young lion's learning, damn it. But if you go back down the CM path, CM Punk path, was this shit needed? Now you're going pipe bomb versus pipe, yeah, come on. Like, you could always have an excuse to go back to CM Punk. And Punk having the championship, it's a perfect excuse. And especially if you're going to say, well, let's have MJF win this interim title. Well, you certainly didn't need the freaking work shoot shit to have him be the interim world champion and set up for a match between him and CM Punk at some point to unify the damn belts. You see what I mean? Like, it's kind of unnecessary almost like WWE-like in terms of kind of a waste of time, energy, effort, and resources. And how does it ta him talking about going elsewhere help AEW? may help MJF, but it certainly doesn't help AEW. Like, how does MJF shit-talking Tony Khan and AEW, fair or not, obviously, help anyone there, including MJF? Like, it shows so shitty, but you're there and you're mad that you're not at the top and you're not getting paid like a top guy in this shithole. That's dumb. Or you're talking about how much you want to go elsewhere. So now you're planning in the fans' minds that there's another product out there and that it might be better. Again, what's the payoff here? And then if you're going to say, well, this is all part of a big plan and a work, well, they maybe developed and didn't do that, but it certainly didn't start off that way. And if you're going to say, well, of course it always was, no, because you wouldn't have started it off this way if you had any type of goddamn sense at all. So if you want to believe this is a work from the very beginning, it was a really bad, poorly constructed, dumbass one. That only because of MJF's greatness, you could potentially salvage something out of. But does taking MJF off of TV for a while potentially feel really wise? Like, if this angle leads to him being off TV for a while then that feels inherently really stupid. I'm all for guys getting breaks and, you know, using talent eight to nine months a year and mixing in break time. I think that'd be good for everybody. But sometimes when a guy's so hot, you got to ride the damn wave. And MJF is arguably your hottest act right now. you got to ride that fucking wave until the tsunami crashes onto the shore. 
And even more so if this was an out of control work and like you thought MJF was going to do one thing and then you're doing something else and you got to say, who in the fuck is in charge here? But I mean, I'll come back to the most important fundamental question. What's the payoff? What's the point? Is this going to elevate others? Probably not. Is this going to necessarily help MJF all that much? Probably not. Is this going to pay off at some type of satisfying storyline? It could, but it would have done that without doing this shit with MJF to begin with. It's great that you can do these things, but sometimes if you don't need to, why bother? I guess is what I'm getting at. So yeah, sure. The promo last Wednesday on Dynamite was great in a bubble. And that's why I keep using the phrase in a bubble. Because when you only look at it in that moment of time, it was spectacular. It was incredibly entertaining television. But as soon as I step back and take a look at the bigger picture at all, I'm like, it's kind of dumb, honestly. <laughs> this dude is so damn good. You don't need to do this shit. It's like working yourself to work everybody else and you end up just working yourself into a situation you don't need to work yourself into. If you could convince me that there's a really big payoff here, that couldn't have just happened organically with what you were already doing with MGF, then maybe that's one thing. But can you really? You took your top heel, made him babyface. You're going to these great lengths to work everybody. And it's like, whoop de doo And then what's the payoff at the end of the day? So yeah, the promo was great. However, I just thought it was kind of pointless now.